Hey YouTube and we're back for another week of videos by myself Noodle and you're here on my channel Noodle Sound. This week is quite an interesting one because I actually have to go to work which is a bit strange I guess because we're still in lockdown and I can't actually remember the last time I went to work physically out of the house. So yeah I thought it'd be interesting to document how it's gonna sort of work but it's gonna be really exciting and I actually can't even tell you what I'm doing I can show you little clips and the most important thing is for you to really see how the equipment is set up what I'm using and for you to learn how to really get the best audio quality on job once we come out of lockdown I guess you could even use this setup at home if you really wanted to so let's get into it the sun is shining today it's a bit windy but it's going to be great So we had to take a bit of a detour and collect a mic. So I am currently waiting for the artist to come back with the mic and then we'll be making our way back to the studio where I will then jump into how we will do the setup. So we are here in the space and I have set up the equipment that I'm using, of course keeping safety as well. So let's get into what I'm using. So today's setup's pretty simple, we've just got one singer and so all I'm using is the UAD Apollo Twin and Pro Tools to record the vocals and I'm also using UAD's console. So within console I'm sending reverb only to the headphone mix which is here set up on an aux channel. The reverb I'm using is the Lexicon 224 digital reverb and for me to do that through console allows me to allows the reverb to only go through the artist's headphones and not Pro Tools so then I have a nice clean recording here and I'm also using Apollo just because it makes it a lot more easier when it comes when it comes to the headphone cue mix and it comes in a nice little case too. Okay, so we have teleported to my studio mostly because I want to show you exactly and take my time with how to set up the UAD and using console which is behind me here to actually send the reverb to the headphone queue without it being sent to the actual signal we're recording. Let's get into it. So here in front of us we have Pro Tools open and we also have the UAD here and what I've had to do is because obviously I need to be able to hear the artist's vocal that's being recorded I'm actually at the front of this Universal Audio Apollo Twin there's a couple of inputs which we actually have on the back which I'll show you in a second but at the front we have one for guitar and we also have the headphone out so what I actually did was I went and bought a splitter but a long extended one that was able to reach me and the artist as well so this is a mini jack and then I attached it to a quarter inch jack which is balanced as I've mentioned in my previous videos we've got tip ring sleeve TRS which means it's balanced and we've got the same thing here on the mini jack I've put these two together like that to be able to fit into the output of the Universal Apollo Twin. Now I have all this cable length so I was able to actually have the artist plug in their inners and then I was also able to plug in my headphones from here. I just want to show you the back of the Apollo Twin. If I flip this round you can see that we have two mic in, mic and line ins. They're dual uh, inputs so you can put in an XLR or you can put in a quarter inch jack and we have an extra two line outs and these two monitors to plug in speakers and then of course we've got the power switch this is where the power connection is the adapter and then this is the thunderbolt which connects to the laptop and also i'll be using this microphone today just a really basic sennheiser and that's going to be going into mic channel one great so here is the pro tool session and what i've done is i've created two channels so one for the mic that we'll be recording and one for the the track so this is actually a stereo channel since our track is going to be in stereo and this mic channel is in mono and 
let's go to the mixing window where we will change the input to mic one, which is, as I showed you at the back of the UAD, that is where the mic was being sent into. So if we make our way over to console, we can see that signal is coming in over here uh, on mic one. And really what I wanna show you with console is something very basic where we arrange the cue, cue is another word for headphones, and how I did this session was that I sent reverb directly to the artist's headphones through console, but the reverb did not get recorded. So here we go. I'm going to show you how to do this. So what I've done is, in console, we've got the, the, the signal coming through mic one and on the right here, we can see auxiliaries. Now these auxiliaries are automatically mapped out to your main bus channel, which is over here. You can see the meters. And also another thing I should point out is over here, which says Q output. And this is for really what source we want to um, actually listen to as the engineer and whether we want to listen to our mix, which would not have any reverb in it, or we can change it to the headphone mix, which would have reverb in it. But right now I am going to show you how we add reverb to the auxiliary. So I've already added a reverb here and how I've done that is if I delete this this reverb. So if you press the little plus sign, go down to reverb. I quite like the lexicon so let's put that on there and I'm just going to leave it on normal settings. We've got a section here that says headphones, so HP stands for headphones, and if I unmute that, I should be able to hear uh, reverb, but right now I can't because I haven't actually assigned my source of Q outputs to the headphones, and the reason why, again, is because this is the mix that I want to hear that's being sent to the artist. The reason why is because I want to make sure that I'm sending her or him the right reverb, making sure that I can really hear what they're hearing once everything's fine and it all works and they say yep we can hear it all properly i can switch it back to mix so if we select hp now we should be able to hear reverb and that's it that is really how the basics are of sending a uh, reverb to the artist and not getting it recorded to your actual pro tools channel here so let's just take it back a step I'm gonna now listen to my mix, which will not have any reverb. And during the shoot, I had the mute button off so that I could then adjust the level for the artist. And once that level was correct, I just left it at that. If I actually wanted to hear the reverb in the mix and I wanted to record that reverb directly to Pro Tools, I would take this off and I would unmute the channel, which these uh, buttons directly go to the main output. And now I can hear reverb. As you can see, I'm still listening to my mix, but because I unmuted the auxiliary's main output, I can now hear reverb. So let's mute it. I cannot hear any reverb. We are listening to my mix. I unmute it, still listening to my mix, and I can hear reverb. If I listen to the source, we can still hear reverb, but at a much less uh, send, at a much less wet signal because I haven't sent as much here as I have here. So that's really the basics of it. And really what, we, what I also want to make clear is that when you've got your Pro Tools channel, you do need to arm. Oh, I'm just gonna take that reverb off. So let's go back to console. I'm gonna mute what's going out to the main output. So, and I'm also gonna change my headphone source to mix and I won't be able to hear any reverb, but, but I can hear double. So what does that mean? That means that I need to actually mute the channel here on Pro Tools because I don't wanna hear two channels. I'm actually only really interested in listening to what's happening on console. Pro Tools is really only acting as a recording program for the process. I wasn't using Pro Tools to actually listen to the signal. I was using console for that. So what I did was I muted the channel over here on Pro Tools. So I stopped hearing double and I was still able to hear what was happening in console with just one voice because it's obviously still coming through here on mic channel one. And if I press record on Pro Tools, you'll be able to see 
the signal coming in. Very low, I will turn it up afterwards. This can also be adjusted from the preamp on the UAD as well. Um, you should be seeing a little cutaway now of how to do that. And yep, so if I stop this recording and you can increase it with clip game if you've got Pro Tools 12. There it is, there's my voice. So of course, please let me know if you would like me to go over in a separate video, anything more about console. But to be honest, I'm still learning a few things about it too. In case you haven't got a UAD, you can also use something similar to the Focusrite 2i2 or any other audio interface you have. You can see it's got the similar input as the UAD dual input with either jack or XLR. And then this is the level where you turn it up for the actual gain. And also we've got the headphones. So it's the same process. It comes with a USB-C cable to USB be for your laptop which is great in this case you wouldn't be using console and you would probably if you wanted to do the whole reverb send reverb to the headphones and not record you would probably just set up a normal aux in pro tools logic or ableton on any door you're using and set that up for them to listen to and then of course you can take that off so it doesn't actually get recorded to the signal and you still have a nice dry audio i hope that was informative for you all i really wanted to break down the uses of the uad um, with pro tools and also like i mentioned also using the scarlet 2i2 yeah this video isn't sponsored in any way but i just really feel like these um, pieces of equipment really help with my workflow so I hope you have grasped a concept on console as well which is what you of course use with universal audio and I just really felt like this was a great way to explain that once you have the not the basic knowledge you can adapt it and apply it to any scenario that you wish and any project whether it be film music so yeah Thank you for tuning in for another week. It's been great to chat with you all and teach you some more audio skills. I actually have so many videos lined up for the next couple of weeks. I'm really excited for you all to see them. Um, but in the meantime, please like, comment and subscribe the video so more people can see these and we can grow our community and get more people involved in sound engineering. <laughs>